Thanks to everybody for tuning in to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. I realize that you had other options, but you chose to spend a little time viewing this video of our Bible study, and I pray that your time will be well spent. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, let your words come alive in us that we are about to hear for the purpose of making us more like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our study text today comes from Mark chapter 4, uh, verse 35 and 36. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. That's Mark chapter 4, verse 35 and 36. It says, On that day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. I want to talk a little bit about we need rest and peace after a tough day. We need rest and peace after a hard day's work. In essence, that's what I'm trying to, to, to get across. Now, Jesus took his disciples to the other side of the sea so that they could learn more about him. And sometimes Jesus will take us through some storms to get us to ask questions about him or ask him question in life about our lives and our situation so that we can learn more about him. And when we learn more about him, we learn more about ourselves. Now, Jesus also was looking for a way to move them to ask more questions about him. And it must have been music to his ears to hear them ask, what manner of man is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. The earth would be a much better place to live in if we would learn to ask more questions about what we have seen and heard. Too often, especially in these days, we, we accept what is said and done without any serious thought. Or we never ask questions uh, about what we have seen and heard and what has been done. Uh, are the things that even about the things that seriously affect our lives. If Jesus was open to questions and sometimes even invited questions about himself, then no man on God's green earth or woman should be so high in office or importance that they can't, can, can say or do whatever they please and their words and actions are never questioned. They asked this great question about the person whose mother at a wedding reception instructed the men to do whatever he told them to do. There are always unusual blessings that come out of obeying Jesus. When Jesus is obeyed, what's needed comes together with the need. When Jesus is obeyed, the lame walk, the blind see, the sick are healed, and, and the dead even are raised. When Jesus is obeyed, lives are transformed for the better by his words. Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Let me say a little bit about that, and then I'll read the next verse. It said, it, uh, that's talking about, like in the Old Testament, the preferred sacrifice was one that was without blemish and spotless. Too often, we try to insert our ideas of perfection into God's plan. God does not need or does he have to accept our mess or our less leftovers or our defiled plans or, or corrupt or incomplete plans. The only way that we can present our bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God is through his mercy and grace. God has to take what we deserve away from us and give, we what, give us what we don't deserve. And then he has to give us grace or what we don't deserve. And the, the simplest mind can tell that that's not, a, not really a fair exchange. That, 
uh, that's not an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. That's a righteous for an unrighteous, a pure for an impure. That took Jesus becoming what we were so that we could become what he is. He became sin in our place so that we could become the righteousness of God as he is. And then and only then are we ready to do our part. And then verse two of Romans 12 says, and be not conformed. Don't be mold and shape. Don't allow the world to determine uh, uh, who you are and whose you are. And what you do in life, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It's necessary that we stop under the mercy and grace of God being conformed to the ideas and ways of this world. There must be an, a repentance and a conversion or a turning away from the world's view to a kingdom view. And by that, I mean the kingdom of God. Though then obedience to God, as stated in Hebrews uh, chapter 10, verse 25, that says, uh, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more. As you see the day approaching, a day when we can do no work, we need to be preparing and working now while we can. This is important so that we can uh, uh, transform the world and as we are being transformed by the renewing of our mind. We must learn to walk by faith and not by sight. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And when we are transformed by the word of God, then we can become more instrumental in shaping this world in which we live. The people uh, that, that, that live and are acquainted with us, who, whose lives we interact in. We ought to be leaving people or they leave us uh, having uh, said something or done something in a way that will leave them thinking that's better than what I do. That's a better way of seeing life than the way I've been seeing life. I need to make some changes for the better. Now, at evening, Jesus was fatigued. He was tired. He was wore out. And yes, Jesus did get tired like we do. He got hungry. He, 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 he got sleepy. Just like we do. He was as much man as or, or mankind human as we are. And at the, at, he was also as much God as God is. Now, at evening, Jesus was, was fatigued and he needed rest and peace. Rest and peace are sought after an exhausting day. Rest and peace are needed after an exhausting day. Note, it was evening of the same day when Jesus sought rest and peace that he had been teaching all day to a multitude of people. The crowd had been so massive and pressing that they had forced him off the shore into a boat. As anyone knows, just being in a massive crowd of people struggling for space is tiring in itself. It strains and taxes the strength and the strongest nerve. Imagine the fatigue of Jesus having been responsible for the crowd, controlling and teaching them all day long. The fatigue and exhaustion of his body were even in the fact that he left immediately for the other shore, making no preparation whatsoever. Pay close attention to the word 
they took him even as he was. Provisions was not a concern of his, a change of clothing, notifying his family that he would be gone for a while. Nothing mattered but rest and peace and the journey. The teaching he had taught a mass all day. Now he was going to do some 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 one on one teaching with his disciples. And we need to learn to make rest and peace a priority in our day. He was so fatigued that he even slept through the storm. He just had to get away. You, you ever had those times when you just got to get away? I'm about that far from one <laughs> this week. I need to get away and I'm working hard, but I know the Lord will continue to strengthen me that I can do the work that I have to do until I get to a point where I can get a, get a little rest. An interesting note that is not commented on by the author of the, gospel, of the other gospel writers is the simple statement, there were also with him other little ships. Mark mentioned this to stress his deity, his being the son of God, and there would be other witnesses to his great power and control over nature. Jesus was as much human as we are, as I mentioned before, but yet he was as much God as God is. And Jesus got hungry, he got thirsty, he got tired, just as we do. We should never say, Jesus, you just don't know how it is to go through what I'm going through. He knows and he has compassion upon us. There were times when he felt deserted, even forsaken, left by his disciples and even his heavenly father. When he cried out on the cross, Lama Sabathane, Lama Sabathane, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the text shows that 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 he got sleepy after spending the whole day dealing with and teaching people, even though he got sleepy, sleep would have escaped him had he not been able to maintain his peace, the peace of God that was in him. And when you got the peace of God in you. Sleep and rest will never escape you. Let me make a simple, uh, make it as simple as I can in a way that works for me. It might not work for you and it might help you so, or to find your way. A, a lot of people that work under, on, on there's a lot of people that work under stress. And it appears that Jesus was able to separate work from rest. When he worked, when, when, when I, for instance, worked for the FAA, I learned that I had to leave work at work and home at home. Never the two shall meet. I could not take home problems to work and be effective. And I could not take work home and be effective. And what I needed uh, at home was to get rest for the next day's work. And if I bought, brought work home with me, then I was not able to get a good night's sleep. Or in that case, a lot of times I had to sleep in the day and work at night. Uh, but, but it's important that we learn how to leave work at work and home at home. Too often we try combining many parts of our lives and end up being, uh, not being able to maintain our peace. Because we have too much going on. John 14 and 27 says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. It's important that when we lay down to sleep, that our hearts are not troubled. That we're not all entangled with what happened or what might happen or what somebody did to us, or what somebody said to us, or what somebody didn't do for us that we thought they ought to have done. Let not your hearts be troubled if you want to, to, to get a good night's rest. 
but allow the peace of God in you to take you to that restful place. Now, also, pressure had come from a constant crowd. Jesus sets a dynamic example in laboring to the point of fatigue and exhaustion. How many of us labor to the point that we, we just collapse, being unable to shower or change clothes, being so tired that we even sleep through a violent storm? Nothing else matters. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, he says, be ye steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day, for the night comes when no man can work. That's John chapter 9, verse 4. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the work of darkness. In other words, evil deeds and evil work. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us do work that we don't have to try to cover up or hide. But we, it's, it's exposed for everybody. That's Romans uh, chapter 13, verse 12. Preach the word, Paul says to Timothy. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove and rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. That's 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. And even though everybody has problems, it does not mean that we can solve everybody's problems. And sometimes you just have to learn how to say no. And that's not an easy lesson to learn. There comes a time to shut the problems of others out and deal with your own problems. And the best way to deal with our problems is to be done in preparation. Proper rest prepares the mind and the body to function correctly. And then we can make correct decisions and solve our problem, and then we're able to help others. Jesus did not hesitate at the right time to steal away. And one of the best ways of getting some rest is to spend some time with the Lord. And I've learned that in life, while I'm laying on my pillow, that's a good time to spend some time with the Lord in meditation. That's where I get a lot of instructions from God when I'm confused and, and hesitant to make a decision, I don't know whether to do this or that. That's where God, when, when I calm myself, I can hear God speaking to me and giving me the right instruction. When we do that, then we can separate the two correctly and handle our problems, and then we can help others with their problems. The next thing is he was so fatigued that he went as he was, without any preparation. There are times when rest and peace are desperately needed. And nothing should be allowed to interfere. Even though Jesus didn't prepare to get rest and sleep, he did prepare for peace, and that would have uh, him ready to deal with the troubles of tomorrow. Don't take today's troubles with you into tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough of its own. Personally, I believe Jesus spent a portion of the night sleeping, meditating, and communing with God, which is important, very important. And that's when we are able to get lofty ideas and thoughts and instructions. The next thing, and the last thing I believe it is, uh, is other ships went also. People with problems are like the poor. They will always be with you. Some people thrive on having problems or drama in their lives. They don't even, uh, uh, they'll even bring, uh, uh, they, they end up being some of the most restless people around, people with a lot of drama. I, I, I 
think that those who follow in the little ship or little boat are those others while, while others or many others had gone away, there were st some still following Jesus other than his disciples. And I believe they followed him because they wanted more of his presence and teaching. They followed him out of town, booking passage across the lake. Just think what they would have missed if they had turned away and followed uh, the others instead of following Jesus. You also need to understand that their boats were not as large as the one that Jesus was on. So the wind and the waves were working on with their transportation even worse. But even being able to be out there where Jesus was calming the storm must have worked wonders on their faith. Oftentimes, I found that it's better to follow Jesus into a storm than to enter the storms or to, to never enter a storm without him. It's better to be in a storm with Jesus than be out of a storm without him. Avoiding the storm on one hand seems smart. But the ones in this other boat would have also missed experiencing his salvation and power over the storm. They would also have missed the huge opportunity to grow in the learning to trust God more and more. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in times when thou mayest be found. Surely in the flood of the great waters they shall not come unto him. Psalms 32 and 6. Isaiah, and this is my verse here, my new verse. I, my verse used to be John 3, 16, but this is, this is, this is, it, 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 I'm, I'm being blessed so much by this verse. Isaiah 43 and 2. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2 says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And the flames shall not consume you. Well, I've got to leave you now. But let me close with this thought. While we were sinking in sin, Jesus came into our sin storm of life and died a sinner's death. They buried him, but he rose from the dead on the third day with all power in his hand. And he's still able to calm the storms in our lives. And I would rather be in a storm with Jesus than to not be in one without him. That's it. Uh, let's pray. Our Father, we want to be more like you, to be able to sleep in storms. So we ask that you would help us to work during the proper times and rest in the right times to develop our peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the meantime, be safe. Wear masks, practice distancing, and wash your hands often. And that, that's really a small thing to do, but the payment or the, the interest will be great. We, we can save lives. And one of the lives that we save might just be our own. May God bless you with his peace. Until we meet again, so long.